Watson has a medical practice to attend to. It's rather worrying. Um, his appointment book, have you seen it anywhere? Well, he usually keeps it in his doctor's bag, but I did find this on the all sad sort of note. Oh, let me see. Five, Westley, EC3, Tuesday, 10th, Royston. present the stories of Sherlock Holmes. A friend in need. I was doing very nicely in my practice and thinking of going into partnership with an old medical colleague. His name was Royston. I'd met him on several occasions and knew he was engaged upon opening up a medical centre in one of the poorer parts of London. I didn't think twice about the authenticity of the proposal. One Tuesday, I called at a very grim and rather dilapidated building called Westley, just off the river. I was totally unprepared for my reception. For, instead of meeting my old friend, I was shown into a small anteroom. It was dark. I couldn't see properly. Before I knew what was happening, hands seized me from behind. I struggled valiantly, and then a violent blow against the side of the head caused me to gasp. Stars swam before my eyes, and I lost consciousness. I <laughs> saw couldn't have been easier. The um, falling for it like that. Yeah, you'd think anyone who'd associated with Sherlock Holmes would be a bit more careful. What's the next step? We get him out and into a cab. Drive him to the boss's nursing home. From then on, it's nothing to do with us. They're not thinking of knocking him off, are they? Uh, I mean, it's not murder. No, the idea is to hold him as hostage, that's all. This is the one way of getting at Holmes. Those two have been buddies for years. If anything can tempt Holmes out into the open, this is the man. Come on now, pop him up. Yeah. He'll be coming round soon. We want to have him safe and sound by then. Uh, it's not going to be easy getting him into a cab. He's a big bloke. No, bigger than I am. Uh, we'll switch clothes. I'll carry the doctor's bag and it'll look like we're helping a patient out. Yeah. Uh, here we are. Check the street. Yeah. Looks all clear. Getting just gas lamps aren't on yet. But there's more than a bit of fog gathering. Yeah, right to you. Come on. No, not talk. Get him on his feet. Yeah. Right. He'll be able to put one foot in front of the other. By the time he comes to, he'll be in the nursing home with no idea of where he is or how he got there. Come on. Well, you support him under one arm, uh, and I'll right. take the other. Uh, Here we go. All right now. So that's the position, Lestrade. Watson is missing, and there's no trace. As you know, this is completely unlike him. I'm quite certain something's happened. He would never have remained silent if it had been possible for him to get a message to me. Hmm. Might have met with an accident. Have you tried the hospital? Well, yes, of course. Watson's well known in most of the local hospitals. There's no report of anyone answering to his description being found. And what do you think it's all about? Uh, well, I'm afraid I take it very seriously. This could be someone's way of getting at me. At the moment, there seems very little we can do except wait. But I should appreciate your help. Of course. Of course. Anything I can do. I need to carry out an investigation into a place in EC3. Now, all I have to go on is two names. One is Westley and the other is Royston. Now, these were scrawled on a note that Watson must have left by accident on the hall stand when he was putting on his coat. Uh, can I have a couple of men and do a search of that river district? Of course. I'll do better than that. I'll even come along myself. What do you say to that? Now, this sudden fog is not going to make our task any easier, Holmes. No, but in a way, it's an advantage. One can remain more secretive in the heavy mists. Look, I think we're on the right track. That large building over there. Mm. 
Uh, I have a shrewd idea that it's empty. And I think... Yeah. Yes. Look here, see by the light of my dark lantern. The street is Wesley. Now, that building will be number five, and if it is, well, we're in luck. I might remind you that we don't have a search warrant. Oh, straight, you're in plain clothes. I've no intention of letting all men swarm all over the building. Come on. I think there's bound to be a window open. I'll do the breaking and entering, and you can come in through the front door. Yes, sir. Uh, if they could see me at the yard now, I'd get a railroad telling off. What sort of place do you think this is, anyway? No, it's just a disused house. Strange. Now, why should Watson want to call here? Now, wait a moment. Look out here in the hall. There's signs of a struggle. A chair knocked over, movement in the dust. And uh, uh, hold the lantern up. Yes, look. Smudges of mud. There's here... Down by the wall. That looks like blood to me. Yes, I'm afraid the good Watson got into quite a bit of trouble here. You see this? It hasn't rained in these parts for some days, and yet this is that grey type of mud that's found near the river. And imprinted in the mud are leaves and small particles of petals. Well, this should tell us something. Holmes, do you seriously mean to say that Watson has been abducted? Well, it certainly looks like it, afraid. But why? That's the question. Watson hasn't got an enemy in the world. It can only be because of his connection with me. Yes, so who is behind all this? That's the question. What's the next move? Well, I don't think we can do a great deal tonight. If I'm right, then Watson will not be in any active danger until I've been approached direct. There will be an attempt to blackmail or coerce me in some way. I think we might well find something of interest if we question the cabbies who service this district. There aren't been many of them on these routes. If Watson was abducted, he must have put up a struggle. He's a big man. Well, come on, the straight. Let's get back on the street and see if any of your men have picked up any clue. Nothing to report, sir. The fog has settled in good and proper. Most folk have got themselves indoors by a good fire. Yes, something we'd all like. Now, here comes a cab. Perhaps we should return to Baker Street and wait for events to develop. Uh, but just a moment. Uh, hello there, cabby. Not many chairs on an evening such as this. Going off duty? Oh, that's about it, sir. Leading the old mare back to the stables. Can't see a thing in this. Are you a regular in these parts? Oh, that's right, sir. Been working in this part of the city for near 20 years. Well, then you must know it like the back of your hand. Uh, tell me, have you in the last 24 hours had reason to convey a sick man from that large house across the way there, number five? Oh, funny you should ask that. As a matter of fact, I did. Earlier on, there was a doctor and his assistant... He had a sick fellow with him. He was recovering from an accident. They bundled him in the cab and I took him south of the river. Place set back on its own grounds. They said it was a private sort of nursing home, sir. Why do you ask, sir? Well, because we're most interested in this accident. Uh, look here, I know it's a foul night and you're thinking of going home, but uh, could you find your way to this so-called nursing home? Oh, yes, yes, of course I could. Come on, up in, sir. It'll take a little time, but we'll manage it. Now, good man. Now, there'll be a sovereign for your pains at the end of it. Now, send your men home to their beds to straight and jump in. There you are, sirs. This is the place where I drop the doctor and the patient. That driveway. They say it leads up to the nursing home. Ah, thank you, cabby. I think you can find this place again, Miss Spade? Yes, certainly I can. Quite right. easy. All right, so that's what we're doing tonight. Uh, to attempt to enter there, we'll be showing our hand and perhaps putting Watson in further danger. Well, I suggest that we now drive back to Baker Street. I shall be very surprised if the next move doesn't come from our adversaries. Whoever's behind this has thought it out extremely carefully. Right, Gabby, uh, 221 Baker Street, and there's another sovereign for you if you can get us there before midnight. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad you're back, and you, Inspector. Oh, Mrs. Hudson, but why are you up and about at this hour? Well, I was worried about Dr. Watson and how you was getting on, and then I went into the kitchen to make myself a cup of tea. I spotted this on the front door, Matt. It's a message, and it's from him. It's got to be. I recognize his handwriting anyway. Oh, do open it, Miss Holmes, and set my mind at rest. He must be all right. Uh, well, it's only a note, not a posted letter. It certainly looks like Watson's writing. Uh, uh, dear Sherlock... 
A reassuring note to say that I'm back in town and staying with an old friend, Dr. Hugh Royston, at his nursing home. I expect to be away for another couple of days on this most interesting development, John Watson. Oh, well, that's all right then, isn't it? No, 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 it isn't. It's far from all right. Huh? Watson most certainly did not write this note. He's never called me by my first name in his life. This is practically an invitation to visit that nursing home that we traced to Strade. And we must be careful. Watson's life is all important to me. But I'll never fall into a trap like this. Never. I had no idea of where I was and knew better than to attempt to open my eyes. There were two uncouth voices and one cultured foreign one. Hey, your boss... Delivered just like we promised. No trouble at all. Easy as pie. How long has he been like this? Oh, two, uh, several hours. Mm, then we can take no chances. He is here in the nursing home, but he is not to stay here. He must be moved, moved once again to his uh, final resting place. But just as an added precaution, I think a small injection into the right arm... A drug I use is most effective. He, he will not regain consciousness for over a day and a night. And now the syringe. Ah, yes, the skin is neatly punctured. So, uh, no question of pain. Uh, uh, ah, ah, caught him just in time. Now, in an hour's time, he will be moved. This time on a stretcher in a carriage ambulance, which you will drive. He will be taken to Bale's Wharf, the number one laboratory. I shall be there to arrange things. Will we then be paid off in full? No, your task is not yet complete. Then we have to await the arrival of Mr. Sherlock Holmes. After he's drowned Watson and is a fellow prisoner, you will be dismissed and it will all be over. You... You mean you're going to do on Balfin? The eventual outcome of these two men is really none of your concern. Well, we have given her hand, though. We're what is known as accessories after the fact or some such. Ain't that right? You are being handsomely paid. That is all that need concern you. Well, I'm not so sure. If you get caught, then so do we. I shan't be caught, and neither will you if you will only keep your heads and do as you're told. Now, enough of this. Come to our final preparations. There is no time to lose. Sherlock Holmes is a fast worker. And now that the overnight fog has disappeared, we must expect swift action. Come, enough of this chapter. Come, to work. Yes, I'm sorry to behave so strangely this morning, Miss Strait, but I believe this is more difficult than I thought. It's clear to me that Watson has been abducted for the sole reason of trapping me. I've therefore not rushed in, but taken things slowly. And the first essential is to establish the true identity of this man, Dr. Hugh Royston. I've therefore taken an hour of early morning, looking him up in the London Medical Register. He does exist, and he lives in this street. And we're about to call upon him. Now, this way, up these steps. Can I help you? Uh, my name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is Inspector Lestrade from Scotland Yard. Is it possible to see Dr. Royston for just a few minutes? Please, do come in. I will inform Doctor that you have called. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Well, this looks respectable enough, Holmes. Doesn't look much wrong here. No, I didn't think there would be. Uh, would you like to come through, please? The doctor will see you next. Ah, uh, thank you. Oh, Sherlock Holmes, uh, Great pleasure to meet you. You're a great friend of John Watson's, isn't that so? Please, won't you be seated and tell me what I can do for you? It's Watson himself. He has disappeared. The only clue we have is your name and address in Wesley Street, EC3. Gracious, are you sure of this? Disappeared, you say? Extraordinary. You can throw no light upon this? Uh, For instance, when did you last see Watson? Some weeks ago, we'd been corresponding. I was rather keen to take a small nursing home in the East End and run it for hard-up people, the poor and delinquent. Watson agreed to consider this. 
The suggested site was at 5 Westley Street, that rather derelict and seedy, run by a man called Henry von Bork. Von Bork? So he's the man behind all this. You know the man? Uh, only too well. One of the most treacherous spies in Europe. Yes, it's all becoming quite clear to me now. Von Bork is using Watson to lead me into a trap. Unfortunately, I cannot afford to ignore it. He will have no hesitation in killing Watson unless he thinks I am coming to the rescue. Thank you, Doctor. You've been a great help. I come to straight. Uh, Wilson, tell me what I wanted to know. I know Von Bork's mind. I know it's tortuous and arrogant. He's convinced that he can outwit me, and in order to save Watson, I shall have to allow him to think so. Well, why don't I get a search warrant against his home and let's raid the place? The element of surprise is always good. This Von Bork won't think you'd consider such a bold plan. Well, uh, you may do that by all means if you wish to stay, but I, I don't think that is the answer to our problem. I'm prepared to believe that Watson was enticed into that nursing home, thinking he would meet the good doctor there. But I cannot think Von Bork will keep him there. It's too risky. No, you'll have him removed. But but where to? Von Bork used to have offices in the dock area. You may recall that we thought he was using them in the smuggling case of the Blue Peter. Now, wait a moment. When we called at 5 Westley Street, we found evidence of a struggle. Undoubtedly, that is where Watson was overpowered. Then I also observed grey mud, do you recall? Imprinted in the mud were leaves and particles of petals. Now, the flowering petals were autumn willow blossoms. Those trees only flourish down by the river. If I think I can trace the old offices that Von Bork used. If I'm right, then that's where they would have taken Watson. Seems to be taking a long shot to me, Holmes. Wouldn't it be better to stick to more orthodox methods? There's no, no time. Von Bork will be getting anxious. He's not going to hang around keeping Watson alive if he can't get at me. Now, I've got to move. The point is, Lestrade, are you still going to back me up? I've done so up till now. I'm not backing out when it comes to a crisis. Lead on, Holmes. I'm with you. Now, this is it, Lestrade. These are the offices. And I fancy Bork has been using them for experimental purposes. We have the appearance of being scientific laboratories. Doesn't look as though they're at all occupied. Uh, I think this way, round the side entrance. I know you do not approve of my method of entering premises, but needs must when the devil drives. Watson's always said that the police were lucky that I didn't choose a career in crime. Huh. I should be grateful for the best of them. Observe, I have a full set of burglars tools with me now. For instance, this door, although made of steel and padlocks, presents no problems. Something tells me I'm going to regret this. And we're caught. It's demotion for me. No doubt of that. Oh, nonsense. Now, oh, dear. What? Ah, uh, now, Tom. Come on, let's take a look. Listen, I can see why you think Watson should be shut away in a place like this. It's quite dark. There's just packing cases. The workrooms must be through there. Uh, yes. Ah, yes, this looks more like it. Fully equipped as a laboratory. Yes, we're on the right lines, all right. Look, wooden steps going down and footprints. Muddy footprints. Now, you see how staggered they are? Now, those are the sort of prints two men would make if they were carrying a, a stretcher. Come on, Lestrade. Now, here. Now, once our eyes grow accustomed to the dark, and Lestrade, I'm right. There, in the corner. It is a stretcher. And it is Watson. By Jove, you're right, Holmes. What? Devil? The door. The top of the stairs. Closed. Caught, Holmes. Caught like a rat in a trap. I knew you would find Watson sooner or later. It all worked out as I planned. It is useless to think you can escape. And within twenty minutes you are both done. You see, for months I have been working on an explosive device which is triggered off by that iron bar door closing. Twenty minutes, Holmes. <laughs> Goodbye. What the devil? Holmes, we've fallen right into his hands. Explosive device. It must be here. Down by the stretcher. Ah, look at straight. Gun cotton, sulfuric acid, yes. nitric acid. Look, look, help me to move, Watson. Right to the far corner. If there's only one chance, we must make our own explosive first. Quickly, Miss Fate. Yes, sir. 
Right over here, by the fence. Now, come on, give me a hand. Prepare cotton. This has to be three parts sulfuric acid to one part of nitric acid. It will burn without explosion on admission. But it's laid up by the iron door. With percussion, it goes up at about five times the power of gunpowder. Holmes, do you really know what you're doing? Oh, I'd better get right to this page. Well, this really is a triumph of Herr Bork. Now, listen. Do exactly as I say and as swiftly as possible. Uh, take this. Carefully now. Right. Now, here. Now, get right back. Back right. by the far wall. Cover Watson with anything you can to protect him. The percussion, when I trick it off, should blow the gate outwards. If it does, then we're safe. We grab the stretcher, get up those stairs as quickly as possible. You ready? Yes. Yes, I'm ready. Right, I'm nearly there, Will. Okay. Here goes. Now, 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 get down. Uh, we've done it. We've done it. Come on, come on. It was some hours later that I opened my eyes. My head ached and I could hardly see. But I was aware of familiar surroundings. The clean sheets under me and the softness of the pillow which smelt of lavender. I was in my own bed back in Baker Street. I tried to speak, but I couldn't. I knew that someone was in the room with me. A friend. A friend whom I knew very well indeed. Oh, Dr. Watson... I do believe you're coming round at last. Now, don't try to move or speak. Just lie there and close your eyes. You've had such a terrible time of it, but it's all over now. Mr. Holmes and Inspector Lestrade have got everything under control. They found you down somewhere by the river, brought you back more dead than alive. But you're all right. They've gone after the men who tried to kill you, and they'll get them. I'm sure they'll get them. Well, they just surrounded Holmes. No chance of anyone getting in or out of this so-called immersive home. This is what we should have done in the first place. Perhaps, but it would have meant sacrificing Watson, and that I was not prepared to do. All right, Lestrade, this is more your line of comfort than it is mine. Go ahead. Do it your way from now on. Right, men, follow me. In we go. Oh, I'll be. Not a sign. Nothing. Not a living soul in the place. Now, what do you make of that, Holmes? I'm hardly surprised. If Von Bork had been successful and killed Watson and me and you in his booby trap, then he wouldn't have wanted to stay around London to be questioned. Now, clearly this nursing home is just a blind. A hideaway until he carried out his plans. Well, how soon it worked out like this. Watson is alive and Von Bork has escaped. But... He who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. I'll catch up with Von Bork, and when I do, it will be a fight to the death. Listen again next Sunday to The Stories of Sherlock Holmes with Graham Armitage's Holmes and Kerry Jordan as Dr. Watson.